Now from the formulas that we have so far, where we have the average velocity, average acceleration, and a formula for the future velocity, and we also calculated a formula for finding the change in displacement. But there's one thing that all of them have in common. Can you see what it is? All of them contain delta t. Now what if we don't have delta t? What if we don't know what the change in time is? So we're going to have to find a formula where we don't have delta t in. To do that, we need to solve it and substitute it into one of the other formulas. Since acceleration applies, we are going to have to have acceleration. So what we can do is simply solve delta t in this formula. Okay, solving delta t means we have to multiply with it both sides change in time and then we get that the change in velocity is equal to acceleration times change in time now to get delta t on its own we need to divide with a on both sides which gives me that delta t is equal to delta v over a now that I have another way of representing delta t, I can go and substitute it into one of the other equations that doesn't have an a. So here we see this one doesn't have an a in it. So we can go substitute into that one. And now we find that the change in x is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2 and instead of delta t we're going to have the change in velocity over a but instead of writing change in velocity I'm going to write it out as the future velocity minus the initial velocity divided by a and now all we're going to do is solve or simplify this so what we see is that the change in x is equal to and notice here we have two fractions that we're multiplying with each other that means we multiply numerators and denominators when I multiply the numerator I see I've got um, initial velocity plus final velocity and final velocity minus initial velocity that is the difference of two squares so this would multiply out as the future velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared divided by 2 times a. Now I'm still not happy with the way it looks. It is perfect, okay, but I can make it just look a little bit better. So I, I get rid of the fraction, multiply with a 2a on both sides. The side it cancels. So I get that 2a delta x is equal to the future velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared. And now just the most common way in which this is represented or which you will find on your formula sheets is when I actually go and add the VI squared on both sides. And then my final expression and final formula is that the future velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the change in displacement. And there we go. We've derived all of the formulas. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.